Good morning guys, I'm Sarah, The Real Simple Mama. This video is going to be talking about a condition we are dealing with in one of my senior hens that is called water belly or ascites. I apologize in advance, this is gonna be a little bit of an emotional video, certainly very sad and a little bit embarrassing. So I'll get the embarrassing part done first. I have done a, a compilation of a whole bunch of short video clips in regards to how to treat an egg bound hen because Calypso, who is the black hen with gold, who's in the middle of your shot right now, she's laying down right there. She's been acting funky since about Friday and it's now Wednesday. So it's been almost a week and I had never dealt with an egg bound hen before. I think even though it's going to be a little <laughs> awkward, I'm going to go ahead and publish that video anyway, just because the information that's in it is completely accurate. The problem is that I diagnosed her incorrectly because, and I'll explain more of this in the egg bound video when it's published in the next week or so. An egg bound hen is a hen who has had her, basically her reproductive system has gotten a jam and it has gotten backed up. And she basically has about two days to pass that egg that is blocking everything or it's going to kill her. Either it's going to, the egg is going to break inside of her or for whatever reason it's going, it's going to kill her. And so with it being five days now, I started to think what, like as terrible as it may sound, like why is Calypso not dead yet? Because she hasn't laid an egg. She's not getting any better really but she's not getting any worse but it's been five days now and I did some more research and I discovered that she actually is not egg bound she has a syndrome that's called water belly or ascites and so that's what the rest of this video is going to be about and I'm going to um, just kind of explain what I learned and what's going on with her I'm going to um, I'm going to maybe clip on the um, the image that I did. It's a little bit graphic. It shows her back end and her vent and everything here at the end of this video. That way, if you don't want to see it, you can just stop playing. But if you do want to see it, you can see how she's really swollen back there. So water belly or ascites is something that I've literally just learned about in the last few days. I've had chickens for four and a half years. I've never had this happen. To be honest, I've never had an egg bound hen either. So I guess that's good. Right, Flapsy? Tick, 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 tick. And... An egg bound hen is, you know, like I said, something that I thought I was dealing with because she was, you know, she's laying down fluffed up a lot. Her color is still bright for right now. And I'm going to go over there and open the door in a minute so we can see her without the hardware cloth in it. But so some of the symptoms early on can kind of be the same, but here's the difference. A, a hen who has water belly, and usually this is, um, I've never heard of it, of a rooster having it. I guess it's possible, but there's a couple of different reasons that your hen may get water belly. Now, the other name for it is ascites, which you could see down in the text below. I spelled it for you, but I'm going to call it water belly. Um, and it can happen for a couple of reasons. If you are raising meat birds, the types of chickens who are bred for meat, <laughs> <laughs> who are, you know, you need them to gain a lot of weight really quickly because those birds, you know, they're, they're, what's going on with their body is very forceful. Water belly can happen with them. It can happen if you give your chickens a lot of fattening treats instead of just giving them the good formula balanced chicken feed with occasional treats that are like healthy treats for them. And the other thing that it can be caused by is if you put artificial lighting in your coop or like, um, you know, egg factories, because again, they're, they're pumping the chicken's bodies. Like, I don't really care about your quality of life. I just want to get as many eggs out of you as I can. And finally, um, and this is Calypso's case or Callie's case, which is this hen. It's just a hen who's older. Like she's just, she's just older, right, Lace? She's really worried about her sister. Right, girly? So what I believe is going on with Calypso is again, she's over four and a half years old now. So she's getting kind of older as, it, as far as chickens are concerned. And water belly is where back behind, if I'm using Lacey as an example, right back in here. So behind the legs and under the vent. So in that zone right there, they get what, I mean, it looks and feels like a water balloon. It doesn't feel firmer. Like there's an egg stuck in there. It literally feels like it's completely squishy. It feels like a water balloon. And the area is swollen, so you can see some of her skin. And I'll try to show that in that clip at the end that I mentioned. But 
the good and the bad thing about it is that it's unless you're feeding your chickens a lot of junk or you're um, you give them artificial lighting because you're trying to get eggs in the winter and you want them to lay more frequently and all of that stuff if you're just like me and you have backyard chickens and you're just spoiling them you know they just they lay when they lay and when they don't they don't and I give them um, protein treats like grub terra or black oil sunflower seeds I give them healthy stuff like plain Greek yogurt you could see that video here um, but I mean they're not getting like a whole bunch of like fatty stuff or stuff that they don't really need so in this case calypso getting it it's just because of age so it's possible that they can get it because you did something to their environment right like like i said the artificial lighting is a problem because you're forcing their bodies to um, ignore their natural instincts on when they want to lay and when their body wants to go dormant you're forcing them to lay eggs anyway or if you're feeding them a lot of junk but otherwise, like in Calypso's case, this just happened because she's old. And the really sad part about it is there's no cure. So I'll go really briefly through the rest of it and then I'm gonna get her out um, and I'm gonna explain a little bit more about what we're choosing to do to help her. So there is no cure. What you can do if you want is you can just let them be comfortable. Calypso still has um, a personality. She's still like, you know, she's still kind of a jerk. She's always been very independent, um, very intelligent, very just kind of a witch, if you know what I mean. And she still has that fire in her personality. But what you can do for a hen who's got water belly is really the only thing you can do for them is either you can decide to cull them or put them down whenever you feel that it's time and that's a very personal decision. Or you can, um, you can sort of delay having to euthanize them by um, if you wanted to use a sterile syringe and poking it through that really swollen watery part back behind them and drain out as much fluid as you can. And of course, that's not going to cure her. The, the, the abdomen or the body cavity is going to fill back up with fluid, but I mean, you know, it, it helps them feel better for a few days. Fluid is going out, leaking into the body cavity. So it's not extra fluid in the liver. It's not extra fluid in the gizzard or in the crop or anything like that. It's in between the organs, right? It's just out, it's just out in the body cavity. And like I said, there is no cure. The body's not going to absorb it or anything like that. So um, it just means that her body is is just shutting down. Okay, so I took a second to get her out. And I'm gonna do another video shortly about why the other chicken is there in that quarantine pen, which is the one by a V2N. But now you can see Calypso. So her color's bright. She's not just sitting with her head down and her eyes closed. She got a hard boiled egg this morning that she, I mean, she downed it. <laughs> so she still has an attitude. She still is able to get up and stand like normal and walk like normal for a little while. Um, and so what we're doing now is basically deciding what we wanna do for the end of her life. What's really sad for me, of course, and I actually talked about this in a video a while ago, but you know, the hardest thing about having animals is sometimes even if you love them and you do everything right, you know, you check the boxes and you spend the money and the time and you're on YouTube watching some ridiculous lady talking about chickens and you know, you do all of these things and you have so much love, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out. I'm never ready to lose any of them, but this one hurts more because Calypso was, she's the only one left of my original chickens. When I started chicken tending really early in 2017, I got six chicks and I have a little bit of videos on here from those archives. The YouTube channel didn't start for a while after that. So, but Calypso was, she was one of my original chicks that we brought home in a box, you know, when she was like five days old. The others from that flock were either roosters and so they were, they were sold or given away or oh, Lacey's doing that weird old stretch, or I had two that have passed away from the heat and I advocate, you know, I talk about that all the time. So, um, so that's why this hurts. It's, it's sort of the end of an era. She's the last original one. And in closing, I'll just say, um, you know, this is one of those conditions like, like an egg bound hen, um, water belly. I had never heard of egg bound. I'd heard of quite a few times. I just never had dealt with it, but this is the first time I, I'd ever even heard of this. So hopefully if nothing else, it gives you a little bit of awareness and kind of learning what's going on. Maybe it'll help you make some decisions as far as like, oh man, okay. I need to not have lights in the coop because it's, it's harder on their bodies or whatever. Um, but the last thing I want you to think about is if something like this happens, I just like you to have a plan so that you're not, um, you know, you're not hit hard with something out of the blue that's just really devastating and difficult for you. So oh, she's going to take a nap. Um, 
you know, in this case, if your chicken has something that's incurable, either they've, you know, they've gotten attacked by an animal and the injuries are just really severe, or you can tell that they've got something that's incurable, you know, they, they, they're never going to get better. What do you want to do about that? And I can't tell you what's right. It's up to you. For me, I didn't want her, now that I know it's not like we're waiting on her to lay an egg, I don't want her to spend her last days in that quarantine pen with a chicken that she thinks is an idiot. Um, I want her to be out here with her original sisters who she's been with for years. Um, if I feel like, you know, someone's poking their face out of the window up there. When I feel like she really doesn't feel good and she's done, um, that I am going to choose to have her put down. Um, and you can certainly, I'm not going to go into detail, but you can do that at home on your own. You can take them to a vet. You could take them, you know, to a farm where they have other, other ways to do that. Um, but I'm not going to let her suffer, but I wanted her to just, you know, to be out here in the sunshine and be with her sisters. We're going to give her some healthy things. I'm going to give her water with electrolytes. Um, again, you, you certainly have the option to drain the fluid if you want to. I've never done that before. I'm going to look more into that before I decide to do it. But just so you guys are aware, I wanted you to look into an egg bound hen, which that of course will only ever happen to a hen and water belly, which in the research that I've done over the last few days, I think it, it would only happen to a hen, but it's possible it might happen to an older rooster or a meat bird um, breed, like a Cornish rooster, or um, you know, maybe if you feed your chickens like a whole bunch of junk, it's, I'm, I'm sure it may be possible. So um, I'm not gonna do another update video about Calypso. The way we're gonna handle the end of her life is our personal decision, but I did want to come out here and educate. Um, I am going to, like I said, attach this clip here at the end. If you want to see how her vent is very active and if you want to see the swelling in the back, but certainly stop now if you don't want to see that. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you learned a little bit. So first of all, as I angle down here, as you're petting your chicken, if you get your fingers like this and you're going down a hen's back and you get to her the base of her tail and you scritch, They can lift their, they will lift their tail. So it's easier for you to see their vent and for you to get back there. So I'm still cleaning the poop off of her, but you see how you can see her skin there?